Today we're here to talk about AR ratios and how they affect your truck or your car and which one is best for you. Now, what we're going to talk about today is for mostly our customers that have diesel trucks. That's what the housings we have here in front of us, but this same logic applies to cars, diesels, S300, S400, Garrett turbos, 7.3 turbos, Cummins turbos. It's all very similar. It's just understanding the difference between the smaller AR and the larger AR. So the smaller AR housing is a smaller number like 0.84 or 1.0 or 1.15. And the smaller AR housings tend to spool faster or the boost comes on sooner is what we'd like to call it. You'll make more boost sooner. The larger ARs will flow more air. And they typically flow more air. That means wide open throttle, higher RPMs, lots of load. They don't flow more air at the lower RPMs. Why would you want a smaller AR or a bigger AR? Well, the smaller AR is gonna come on sooner, notice boost quicker, usually more boost lower in the RPMs and more boost at lower throttle, but they'll choke out sooner. So they're gonna reach a point at which you can't flow anymore through the housing, and then your back pressure will continue to climb and boost will not climb. The larger turbine housing is gonna be a little bit of the opposite. You're gonna notice more lag down low, the turbo's gonna come on a little later, but you'll flow more air at the top end, which usually means lower back pressure. So can the turbine housing be too small or too big? The answer is yes. And that's much more common when you're doing a universal turbo like on an S300 platform or a Garrett turbo. If your vehicle didn't come with a turbo and you're trying to pick a turbo for it, that's why the S300 has so many turbine housings. I mean, there's a lot of different options. But if you do a bolt-on turbo like a 7.3, you only need a couple of different turbine housing options because they're all based very closely to what you're already gonna want. You don't need to go any smaller or any bigger because that's outside of the range at which you're going to be running. So specifically 7.3, we've got a 0.84, 1.0, this is for the OBS, we got a 0.84 and a 1.0, these are for the Super Duty. They do make a 1.15, we don't recommend it, ever. We don't like it. They're laggy, they're slow, they're smoky. The upsides just don't outweigh the downsides to us. We don't offer them. In fact, we typically recommend the 8.4 to most of our customers because typically the 8.4 is gonna outperform the 1.0 in every way, except if you got bigger injectors, maybe larger than 238.80s, and you're pushing higher RPMs, 3,500, 3,600. That's where you're gonna see advantages out of the 1.0. Down low at 1,500 to 2,000 RPMs, and especially with smaller injectors, 160 stock, 180 30, 205 80. The 8.4 is gonna be better in every way. You will see zero benefits with the 1.0, except for more lag. And in some situations, uh, less EGTs, but it's not typically gonna make any more power, and it's not really gonna flow anymore in those horsepower ranges. All right, let's take a look at a specific Garrett map. This is a map provided by Garrett Honeywell, and this is for the GT30 Turbo. Uh, I don't have a map for all the different options, but this one's just laid out very easily so we can quickly understand what the AR ratio does. If you look at the different lines, the green represents the 0.63 AR, the blue represents the 0.82 AR, and the red represents the 1.06 AR. And you can see along the bottom of the graph, it's, it's pressure ratio, but you can think of that as boost. And on the left side of the graph, you can see the corrected gas turbine flow. It's kind of like RPMs. So if you look, you can see to get more flow, you have to increase the pressure ratio. So your back pressure has to go up for you to get more flow. You can see the green line, which is the 0.63, comes on at a lower pressure ratio and actually flows more at a lower pressure ratio. But you can see all of these lines flatten out as the pressure ratio goes up. What that means is that at a certain point, the turbine housing will choke out. And it doesn't matter how much pressure you cram through it, you're really not flowing that much more. And that's when you can bump up to the next AR size. The downside of that AR size, it takes a much higher pressure ratio or more pressure ratio, or it takes more flow to create that pressure that you're gonna need. So they kind of go hand in hand. You gotta have pressure to create flow, you gotta create flow to have the pressure. So as you travel up and along that line, you can understand the relationship of the different turbine housing options. We're gonna use three different pipes or tubes to simulate the different AR housings and what they do. If you think of this one as the smaller AR housing, this one is the middle-sized AR housing, and this one is the largest AR housing. What I'm gonna have 
Jason do is he's gonna simulate your motor or your engine. He's kinda gonna simulate the turbine housing and how it flows there through and creates pressure. So he's gonna take that and he's gonna try to blow as long as hard as he can and move the paper. You can do it one more time. You can see the paper immediately moves and he's able to move it for a long period of time with how much air he has in his lungs. That's a smaller AR ratio. The pressure happens real quick, but it maxes out and it takes a lot of time to get all the air out of his lungs. It's kind of like your engine. It's what a smaller AR housing will do. Let's do a medium AR housing. Same thing. Let's try it again. So he still moved the paper and he's able to do it for a little bit and then all the air was out, but he still was able to make pressure, just not as much. And pressure is what drives that turbine wheel. So let's do the large air housing. Nothing. Oh, maybe a little bit. So he does not have enough air in his lungs or you could think you don't have enough air in your engine, enough flow through your engine in too large of a turbine housing, you're not gonna take advantage of it. Now, if he was hooked up to a giant air compressor, you wouldn't be able to get much air through this straw and it'd max out and you wouldn't be able to flow. If you had a giant air compressor through here, you still would be able to create that pressure needed to move the paper. It's kinda how AR ratios work. It's a weird way to think about it, but it's the pressure at which you can flow through. Upside of a small turbine housing or small AR housing, you get lots of pressure quick and you're able to spin that turbo really hard. Downside is you can't get all the air fast enough out of your engine. And then you've got the middle size and the larger size. We get asked a lot about VGT turbos and how AR ratios work with them. And although there is an AR ratio for this housing, it's not incredibly important and they don't adjust it. That's what the veins are made to do. The veins typically simulate different AR ratios. And what they can do, if you look at it, is when the veins are all the way closed, it creates this very small gap for the air to flow through, which creates a lot of pressure in the turbine housing and spins that turbine wheel really hard. And as you open it, it's kind of like adjusting the AR ratio. And if you're all the way open, it's like running a large AR housing. We often get asked, hey, can you make a large AR housing for my VGT turbo? And although you could do that, if you are not already running your veins wide open and you're maxing it out, then there's no reason to. If you're still at like 30% or 20% or not all the way open, then you can just open the veins and it'll simulate a large air housing. Same goes with smaller. You can just close the veins and it creates more pressure and simulates a smaller AR housing. So it's kind of like being able to adjust the AR housing on the fly. So there you guys go. AR housing, smaller AR brings on the boost sooner, bigger AR flows more on the top end. It's important to size the right turbine housing for your application. There's too many different options to go over in this video. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comments, send us an email at sales at caseyturbos.com or give us a call.